now let's invite uh, mr balaji lakshmanan thanks again to him so uh, we used to run around for uh, ods so yeah, he used to help us to get ods so practically in in fourth year you know i close to about 70% of the days i didn't go to college uh, in in terms of presentations and other stuff so uh, pleasure being here um, at this podium and uh, talking in front of all of you um, i'm balaji lakshmanan i run uh, imakerobots.com so uh, it's 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 always endearing to be among students and uh, uh, speak to them um, and especially about uh, the digital uh, uh, revolution you know that is coming up so um, something as as students and people in education all of us have to understand is um, education is essentially not learning of facts right so it is only about the training of the mind so if you are not training your mind and you know simply learning the facts you know you are not uh, actually uh, learning and being a part of education um so you know so when we talk about digital revolution um say if we look back what has been the digital re revolution that we have seen uh, there has been lot of electronics revolution in the field of electronics then computers have come mobile phones internet software and stuff like that right and i'm sure uh, almost everybody would have used parts of all these things so there are essentially how many types of people in the world how many types of people in the world how many so i was i was told by the presenters that uh, you know most of the students who are invited here are all very brilliant and uh, you know they'll be interacting with me and then they'll be answering um, to the questions and stuff i hope uh, all of you will do that yes yes okay so essentially there are one zero people in the world right so that there are two types of people in the world people who understand digital uh, essentially the binary and then those who don't so of late it is very important that we understand the uh, digital or the binary language because that is the language of computers so um i thought i, I should share uh, you know give you some introduction about how the next wave of digital revolution is going to be and what are all the fields that it might be uh, in so um essentially we have big data artificial intelligence robotics iot which is internet of things then something on the social media and digital health uh, so these are all you know some briefly some of the domains where uh, the digital revolution is already happening so when we look at big data you know probably most of you would have heard about big data big data what essentially it is is essentially all the data that all of us use let's say be it facebook twitter or you know whatever you search online you know all the data so which is terabytes and terabytes of data which are all getting stored in the computers and then they are analyzed by machines and then a whole bunch of predictions a classical example if you can see you know let's say how does google know what ads to pop up right so they essentially look at a lot of your history and then do a whole bunch of analytics and then predict which are the right set of um you know marketing material that can pop up so that you will click it that is one simple example and a whole bunch of uh, big data analytics is as well happening um let's say um, another classical example would be uh, can can somebody tell me when you submit a resume or your cv right who who decides to shortlist your cv hcha yes who uh, so let's say there are like 10000 cvs so who shortlists let's say 100 cvs from 10000 cvs so they are computers i mean computers in the sense there is some kind of an algorithm which goes through your digital resume and then it comes it has some particular algorithm keywords buzzwords some kind of shortlisting and then out of you know 10000 cvs it probably shortlists 100 cvs then the hr looks at it right so uh, probably next time when you are uh, drafting your cv or your resume 
probably you need to think about these things, right? Because your first line of communication is not with people, it is essentially with computers and algorithms. So that's something that you need to remember. Then in the field of artificial intelligence, there is a whole bunch of, you know, revolutionary domains and uh, um, fantastic work that's happening. So especially in the field of, let's say, optimization or, you know, how algorithms can learn by themselves and adapt to different people, right? Um, so can, can somebody tell me some movies that you've seen in uh, artificial intelligence space quite recently? Yes? Endiran, okay. Then, so uh, any of you have seen the movie called Har? So, which is one of the award winning movies. So, which is an operating system which kind of adapts uh, to a person. It's a very interesting movie. I would encourage all of you to go and watch. Then, there is a lot of interesting work that's happening in the field of vision, speech. So, let's say we had a couple of apps. Uh, that get de developed in this field. Then a lot of work in the distributed computing, how to do a load, lot of load balancing and stuff like that. These are all some very interesting fields where a lot of revolution is happening. So, the uh, another very interesting space essentially is IoT, which is Internet of Things, where I'm sure, you know, probably in another 5 to 10 years' time, almost every device will be connected to each other. So let's say for instance, you drive to your home, uh, the gates know that the car has reached and it automatically opens. And then you, the parking lot knows that the car is coming and then the you know shed opens. And then once you park the car, the house knows that uh, the car has come and probably the door opens, right? And then you walk in, the room knows that you have entered and then the lights turn on. And by the time you walk inside the steps, the steps know that you are walking in and then the AC will turn on, right? So all those things are already happening. Uh, probably we don't, we don't see it as much, but all, the, all those kind of things are already happening and that kind of automation is happening already. And uh, of course, social media, I'm sure uh, all of you are much more familiar, right? Yes? I'm sure all of you are on Facebook, Twitter, um, how many of you blog here? How many of you have a blog? So, um, another very important question that I always want to ask students is, so when it comes to, you know, digital revolution and contributions, so how many of you use Wikipedia? Almost everyone, right? But how many of you contribute to Wikipedia? How many of you go and edit? How many of you go and, you know, put data that you know, right? Not many. I would very strongly encourage all of you, so uh, as, as students and the digital people, you know, we should not only consume, we should also contribute, right? Because w Wikipedia, as you know, is, is not computers writing data, right? It's people writing data, right? So somebody has written stuff for you to read. So, you know, it, it is also imperative and more responsible that you also go and contribute all these data. and. Um, as students, probably one of the things that you probably miss, all that you are putting in the social media is impacting in your online reputation, right? I'm not sure how many of you follow uh, things online. Quite recently, Flipkart has decided there will be no interviews, okay? And uh, I'm sure this is how things are going to move. So people are going to hire depending on your online reputation, you know, uh, in terms of what you talk about you know, and what kind of recommendations people have for you. So that is essentially going to decide whether you are going to get the job or not. So it is not only that, you know, one shot questions and stuff like that. So all of you need to be very careful about what you essentially talk about, you know, and what you post and stuff like that. That's something that's very, very important. Um, then uh, we are talking about digital health. So digital health, you know, uh, essentially we are talking about telemedicines, digitization of records and there are enough algorithms which can kind of predict depending on your past medical history, what are the potential problems that you could face and stuff like that. So these are all, I mean, things that are already happening and definitely it is going to shoot up. So now we come, you know, more into my specific domain, you know, where uh, robotics, right? So can somebody tell me the robots on the left? 
yes r2d2 and c3po right so they were one of the legendary first set of robots which came uh, in movies right and of course we have our own uh, uh, endren rajini kalevar right so thanks to endren movie that almost uh, everybody knows about robots even my grandmother you know knows what a robot is right that's something uh, fantastic so but where are the robots we have been talking about it for a long time right so uh, one of the things the students that you need to understand is robots are not only humanoids right so whenever we talk about robots the first thing that probably comes to your mind is uh, a human looking robot which is a humanoid right but something as students what you need to understand is robots are not the only type of humanoids it could be robotic arm it could be um, you know uh, the robotic dogs it could be flying robots it could be wheeled robots that's something that you need to understand so um here is a humanoid uh, that um me and my team had made this is uh, also for a movie called mugumudi which released couple of years back so I was the robotics and technology consultant for the movie so uh, the director asked me mission he asked me to build a robot which is in a lab which is like a semi finished robot so it has got about 7 uh, uh, degrees of freedom it can do lot of manipulations so once once all these actions are practically possible after that you can essentially write lot of piece of code to make it learn add sensors and stuff like that so that's something um, uh, wonderful that you can play around with robots and uh, of course uh, by now all of you know that the impact of robotics in the industry is you know pretty amazing almost every mobile phone that you carry you know is probably made by robots if you are traveling in a car probably parts of the car is made by you know robotic arms so if if robots are not there practically we will be like at least 20 years behind right so and you, the kind of accuracy and stuff that is needed can be uh, you know uh, deployed by the robots and uh, let's say robots have started entering our homes so can can somebody tell me the name of the robot vacuum cleaner any, anybody have heard of any companies that manufacture robot vacuum cleaners yes so there is a company called uh, i robot so roomba so it is one of the very famous uh, robot vacuum cleaners so which has come into the consumer space and of course uh, the hot and happening thing right now is in terms of the uh, driverless cars right so googles and tesla and almost every other com- car manufacturer have started thinking about driverless cars probably you know in, in future all that you have to do is take your phone open the car app you know command the car to come and it'll kind of take you around and stuff like that so it's kind of uh, fascinating and uh, so all these things are essentially happening right now and of course uh, in the field of robotics flying robots or quadcopters and uavs they are all pretty common and uh, uh, amazon is already working on a drone to deliver the products so let's say you order something online you will have a drone which delivers the product at a short notice and of course uh, robots uh, in defense is as well something that is uh, very interesting and happening right now so uh, i had an opportunity to work with the indian army's robotic division and we essentially collaborated to build some uh, um, you know robots which are used on ground and stuff um, then we have actually built you know some of the robots which are um, intelligent telepresence robots so so we were talking about you know um, video conferencing right so this is essentially teleporting yourself via the robot so there is a screen so you can log into the robot imagine the robot is in some other location you will be seen on the screen you can see what's happening on the from the using the camera and you can go around so literally you can essentially uh, you know be in another place via the robot 
So uh, that is essentially the concept where it is more of video conferencing on wheels. Mm, then we have uh, worked on a robot for banking. This is in collaboration with uh, Polaris. So imagine going to a bank and sitting in the visitor's lounge, a robot comes. You can essentially interact with the robot. Let's say you lo lost your ATM card. You, you go put your fingerprint, it will instantly give you your ATM card. Or you want to talk to the customer care, you can do a video conferencing via the robot. So it has got almost all the banking devices and then the whole idea is giving a much better uh, user experience uh, for the customers. So this is something what we have already done and we have been pitching it to uh, different banks. And besides this of course I have conducted a whole bunch of uh, robotics workshops across uh, schools and colleges. Um, I, and I would encourage all of you to, you know, do at least uh, one robotics project in your student life, you know, which will kind of give you, um, you know, more hands-on experience in terms of technology. And we were as well talking about medical telepresence, right? So essentially we have integrated uh, the medical uh, devices, which is called Vitals device, let's say your pulse, heartbeat, uh, your ECG then blood uh, sample and stuff like that. So a doctor probably sitting in, uh, let's say, Delhi can, you know, monitor a patient, you know, in, in any part of India. So on one screen, he'll see the video of the person and on the other screen, he'll see the live medical data. So this essentially helps the doctors to consult the patients a lot better. So this we are trying to uh, pilot in one of the uh, uh, hospitals in Chennai. Uh, then uh, we are as well working on a robot for breast cancer diagnosis. This is in collaboration with IIT Madras and uh, Patterson Cancer Institute which is a part of Vidya Health Centre. Um, so that's uh, again another very very interesting robot that uh, we are working on which includes a zero touch, non-intrusive, non-radiation uh, based robot. Uh, you know where we have brought down the cost by one fourth, the time taken by one fourth and stuff. Um, so this is another very interesting robot. Um, then uh, we collaborated with some doctors in, uh, in Stanley Medical College and worked on affordable robotic fingers. So the whole idea is, you know, how do you, um, you know, help the amputees in terms of doing some simple tasks, let's say lifting a water bottle, opening a door and stuff like that. And the idea was to come out with a more affordable version using 3D printers and stuff like that. So. We essentially came out with a prototype and I'm trying to make it open source. So here you can see the patient, uh, you know, able to lift uh, the water bottle using the robotic fingers that, um, you know, he has done. So one of the other things that we are trying to do is to try and build a robotic, you know, full arm so that, uh, you know, it can help much, uh, you know, the amputees who have lost their hands and stuff. So, um, fine, so, so essentially I think I have given you a kind of brief of some of the domains where a digital revolution is go going to come kind of happening. I am sure all of you will be thinking, hey, fine, great, we have known, but what about things what we can do, right, as students? So, um, so essentially what I would encourage all of you, you know, as, as students is to form groups, you know, I am sure all of you make friends, you go out, enjoy and stuff like that. But as well ensure that in your students' life, you form communities, you collaborate with each other, right? And then you start building projects. It was very heartening to see uh, students presenting a lot of very interesting projects. So that is the way to be. So ensure that you are doing, you know, interesting work in your college life. That's something that's very important, right? And uh, definitely don't complain, right? As, as students, you know, it is always uh, tendential, right, to uh, say, hey, you know, this is not good, that is not good, I am not getting this, I am not getting that, right. So, if you are going to complain, wait till you get a job, okay. So, you will know, you know, things which will, where you will have a lot of more pressure than what you do now, right. So, try and look at things and then try and, uh, you know, maximize your utilization. So, that is something that you need to definitely do. And, uh, Definitely do as many projects as possible. So gone are the days where, you know, you can put I know this, I know C, I know C++ and stuff like that, right? 
So gone are the days where you can be theoretically good. So nobody is going to hire you for that. So everybody is going to look at what you have learnt and how you have implemented. Right? So almost every interview question all through your life, not only in your initial um, you know, rounds of interviews and stuff, everywhere it's going to be, hey, what have you developed? What have you done? Right? So that's something that's going to be asked all through your life. So ensure you've done enough number of projects, right? So don't wait till, uh, you know, your final year, eighth semester, when teachers are pushing you on a deadline and you have reviews, right? And stuff like that, okay? So start working on the projects, uh, you know, uh, probably I would say at the starting of your second year and stuff. So that, let's say, when you reach your final year, you'll have enough projects and your CV will be solid. And like I said, remember, the people, I mean, uh, you are actually drafting a CV not for people, but for computers, right? So ensure, you know, your, your CV is good, okay? So computers don't understand what is your objective, right? I want to work in an organization which is innovative, blah, 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 right? It doesn't mean anything for computers, right? What matters is, hey, you know, I've done this project, machine learning project, a data mining project, a robotics project, right? And stuff like that, right? That's what computers understand, right? So remember all those things. And um, definitely learn and have fun, you know, sometimes as students, you know, somehow learning and having fun seems to be two different things. So, you know, so this is something I always tell to students and uh, probably my, my former faculty can as well vouch. The best way to bunk a college is to get OD, right? So on duty. So, you know, go participate in all these events. So take your ODs, bunk college, and definitely ensure that you are having fun. So try and have a bucket list. So let's say probably one takeaway, if at all, uh, you know, I want all of you to have is try and create a bucket list probably by the end of day, right? Say that, hey, you know, before I graduate or in the next six months or next one year, you know, these are the things I want to do. I want to do one mobile app in Android. I want to make one robot, right? Or I want to meet this particular person, right? Something like that. Or I want to take up this online course in Coursera, right? So, awfully, the only thing that is required from the, from anybody and especially from students is your time and your, you know, your uh, intention to execute, right? So almost everything is available online. And definitely explore, right? So one of the questions that is always asked is, how do I know what I like, what I enjoy, right? Nobody knows. So the best way to know is to go and explore. Let's say you can, you know, test your hands as in, a, in Android, you can test your hands in building robots. You never know, only when you explore, you will know what you like, what you're really passionate about, right? So you can't decide to be passionate. You can only realize that you are passionate about something, right? So try and explore so that, you know, you will uh, know what it is. And then uh, these are the best time in your life. So uh, essentially make the best of it. And uh, so here is a short uh, uh, AV. So this is a short film what we made uh, when I was in IIT. You have passed your undergraduation. Wow! Arda, I have passed my Mommy, I have passed! Get a job and then you shout, idiot. Hello, teacher. How are you going to hold this job? I'm trying to... Uh, my job button is like a white marble. 
you know, I get to go to every corner of my company. My CEO expects me every day. The job from school, man. Yeah, this. Okay, I'll see you then. Probably I'll catch you someday later. See you. Bye bye. Why are you late? I was in a meeting with my advisor. How is your meeting with your own teacher? It is pretty strong. Do you have any questions? What will be the nature of my job if you join your company? My role will be a consultant and you will be training freshers. Oh great, sounds interesting. You can join our company anytime. Thank you. 
da di di da da di di eta da di di da da di di eta da di di da da di di small short film where I thought you know it was fun making it so essentially the whole idea is you know trying to convey that you know it doesn't matter which college what department you know uh, your background and stuff like that all those things don't matter at the end of the day what matters is what you have learned and how you have used that learning to develop your own life and to the best life of others right so I wish all of you uh, good luck uh, with stuff that you are doing and uh, uh, you know Keep doing awesome stuff. Leverage your uh, digital uh, life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Balaji Lakshman, for that interesting speech on robotics.